So this week, something very interesting happened. I pride myself in not forgetting how it felt to learn things. I was not exactly the best student. I did not practice as much as I should have. I had moments of obsession where I would obsess over something and learn it until I could not unlearn it. That's how I learned things. But beyond that, I was a very bad practicer. The reason why I was a really bad practicer was because I was often discouraged by things that I was learning that felt hard. It makes you feel like you can't play the flute. Your teacher teaches you something in the lesson and then you go home and try to do it and it's like it's so hard to put into practice what your teacher is telling you because it does not necessarily sound good at first and you don't feel great either because a lot of times they're telling you to do something that's very counterintuitive. So for example like rhythm. If I had practiced a rhythm incorrectly and then I repracticed it in the right way that my teacher had taught me in the lesson. When I went back home to do it, it just, it feels so unnatural. It feels so wrong, even though I'm doing it the right way because my brain had practiced it in a different way. It's very discouraging, like having that happen all the time. I'm only telling you all this because when I became a teacher, I wanted to make it a point to identify with my students in their moments of slaving away at something that feels counterintuitive and makes them feel like they can't play the flute. It pains me every time I have to teach something to my students that I know that will cause them some struggle in the practice room for like a month or two. It's tough being on the other side and watching them have to go through the same struggles that I did. I make it a point to tell them that I understand and I remember, okay, keep that in mind. I remember what it was like. This week though, I discovered something that I forgot. So now I have to give you more background in terms of the two very generalized types of musicians that I see in this world. One is the type of musician that relies mostly on what you see and what you read. As long as you are given something to read, you can play it. But if you are told to improvise something or to listen to something and then play it, you can't do it or it's hard for you to do it. I fall into that category, which is why I failed ear training in my first year of university. I made a whole video about it, you can go check it out. The other type of musician is the type of musician who relies solely on their ear. This is like David Eric Ramos, who I did a uh, interview with on this channel, so you can also check that out. The written note causes a lot of struggle because it's hard to connect what's written on the page with what you hear. But if you were to play something for them, they can mimic it exactly. No problem with dictation, no problem with ear training, no problem with blending in with people, playing with people, feeling the beat, blah, blah, blah. You know, everything is done by ear. Now, here's the thing. When you are a teacher, you probably fall into one of these two categories. So for me, I fall into the reading category where like I'm sort of the sight musician, but I have lots of students. There ain't no way all of my students are going to be like me. I am going to have students who rely more on their ear. So I have some students right now who are struggling with reading notes fast enough. I at first thought that it was solely because of these differences, ear-based versus sight-based. So in the last few months, I have been trying to learn how to teach ear-based students. It's been quite the journey. I'm gonna be really honest with you. For me, when I read something, I immediately can see where it is on the keyboard. I can immediately feel which fingering it is going to be. Like, it's intuitive to me. So for me to work with students who like, once I play it, they can immediately replicate it. But then once I get them to read something, they can't do it. It's mystifying to me because for me, it's like, it feels so natural, but for them, it's not. This week, one of my students told me that he was looking at a staff, counting from a certain note, figure out which note that was before he could play it, which you can see how slow that is, right? So he was like, no, I need to make this faster. I need to make this more intuitive. So what he started to do was actually to put the actual letter name of the note 
onto the staff where it belongs. I'm so glad I bought this thing, by the way. This thing was like super cheap off of Amazon. Like it was a complete impulse buy, but it's like, mm, I love this thing. He was doing A, B, C, D, E. Eventually his brain will get the message that anything on this line is an A in the treble clef, anything on this line is a B, etc, etc. I was like, oh, that's really interesting because what he was explaining was that he could very comfortably just play the note if you were to call out a letter name. He doesn't have to think about that. And also if he reads a letter name, he doesn't have to think about it either. The only time he has to actually think about it is when it's actually graphed onto a musical staff. So he was like, well, let me combine the two together. Guys, a light bulb went off in my head. I realized that this is exactly how I learned how to read music when I was seven years old. Seven years old for me is a very long time ago. It was like watching my life flash before my eyes when he mentioned this and I was like, wait a second, I did forget how I learned to read music. When you learn piano, I'll link a page in the bottom bar below so you can go see it. I don't wanna put the picture up right here cause you know, copyright issues. They will draw, here's my really ugly keyboard. Oh wow, apparently I can't draw a keyboard. Let's say that they're just teaching you three notes. So they're just teaching you C, D, and E. So they'll actually have a drawing up here of the keyboard with the specific notes that you are learning for that lesson. Then what they do is they draw a little treble clef, but they don't write a staff on there. They would write the letter names inside of the note heads. They have the treble clef, they have the time signature. Then they just plot this without it being plotted on an actual staff, but it's just for your brain to get used to reading going up and down. The nice thing is that you still see how long each note is supposed to be because it's still like half notes here and that's still a whole note. I forgot that this is exactly how I used to read music. When you get more advanced, that's when they start actually putting it on the staff itself. So then eventually you will see it like this. Blew my mind for all of my pride in saying that I remember how it was like to learn things. This was like one of the most basic things I completely forgot. If you are playing the flute, what you can do is draw the fingerings of the notes up here. I would actually still learn it on the keyboard This is how I would learn how to read music faster. This is a tried and true method of teaching young children how to read notes on the staff. The other thing I realized is that I spent actually an entire summer substituting for a piano teacher. So I actually taught a bunch of piano students for like three months. I had to use this method of teaching like for most of the students, because most of them were really little kids. I didn't think much of it at the time. In fact, it didn't even occur to me at that point that I had learned it in the exact same way. It wasn't until my student mentioned it this week that I was like, wait a second, not only have I just taught kids how to read like this before, I myself learned like this. So obviously, if you haven't had this kind of training before, I could see why you would essentially have to always be counting from only one line rather than reading it like this intuitively. It makes complete sense. And you know what? I completely forgot about it. I completely took reading music for granted. If you think about it right now, do you actually remember exactly how you learned to write the alphabet? Do you remember the moment that you were taught how to do it. You probably remember practicing it, but in terms of the first time learning it, do you actually remember? Because I don't. And that's what I forgot here was I forgot what was 
the exact moment when I learned how to read notes plotted on a staff. I only remember practicing it, but I don't remember the point at which I learned it. And that's the missing key. You as a teacher are the one who's supposed to provide that first point at which you learn something. And I was missing that. I'm kind of embarrassed about this, but you know, this channel is about being real. So I just thought, whatever, I'm just going to tell you guys about it. For those of you who are having trouble reading music like this, rewrite whatever music it is you are looking at. Draw a keyboard, draw the fingerings for the flute, and then write the actual note names in the note heads themselves. Read all your music like that for like, a couple months. Before long, you'll realize that you can actually read the notes without all the little extra help around it. Basically, you just have to go through the same process as everyone else, but maybe just a little bit later in your life than other people. As long as you go through it and you learn it, no one's going to care when you learned it. I'm probably going to, you know, come across other things that I realize I forgot. <sighs> very humbling as a teacher. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys learned something from it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought and how you learned how to read music. As usual, just like every other YouTuber out there, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my videos, but actually you should punch the bell icon to be actually notified of when I post because you know, YouTube broken. Old news, right? My last video is playing over here, which I will put a link to up here for you guys. If you want to hang out with me every other week, I am on Patreon live streaming. You can hit me up on my social media, which are listed down below, but otherwise I will see you guys next week. Bye. I'm gonna make sure this thing is actually focused on me because I am blind as a bat. One, two, three, four, five. I swear I know what a music staff looks like. There's a frog like croaking outside. That's really interesting.